Welcome to the super fast touch designer tutorial series. In this tutorial, we'll create an iridescent opalescence texture with glassy and chrome. Simply follow each step to reach the outcome you want and feel free to experiment with the parameters as you progress. All right, let's begin part one, network. I always start by building the network before doing any type of parameterization. Let's begin the network for the first version of pseudo liquids. If this is your first time on my channel, you should know that I've used this component in my previous tutorials. If you want to replicate it exactly, I've provided a link in the description on how you can create it yourself. But if you're in a hurry, you can also find it ready to use on my Patreon. Okay, let's continue with the network. Connect an edge followed by a mirror. Create a null to keep things organized. After the null, create a composite and connect the previously created mirror to the composite. Create another null followed by one more null. You'll understand why later. Now duplicate this setup four times and insert the following operators into each. Insert a normal, a blur, and finish by adding two levels at the end. Rename the final nulls in the network with the following names. Bump, height, metallic, and ambient for ambient occlusion. Now create a PBR material and let's map these operators in the PBR material. Copy the following mappings. We'll use the metallic top for the base color and the metallic map. And finally, map the ambient to the ambient occlusion. This completes the first part of the network. Let's move on to the next part, where we'll create an environment to render geometries or 3D surfaces in Touch Designer. Great. First, create a grid sop and connect an attribute create sop. Then finish with a material sop. Connect a geo and create the following sequence of tops. Add a render top followed by a displace. As usual, connect the last output of the last operator to both inputs of the displace. Create an RGB key and separate from the network. Create a constant, followed by a composite. Connect the RGB key to the composite and end the network by adding an out. So far, so good. Now, let's create the necessary operators for rendering. Create an environment light, an additional light, which can be a point light and a camera. Finally, add a movie file in because we're going to load an HDRI into the scene. Drag the movie file in onto the environment map and select the environment map option. Now load an HDRI, which you can get for free from HDRI Haven. I'll leave the link in the description. I recommend using HDRIs with a maximum resolution of 2K to avoid drop frames. Part two, parameters. Perfect. Let's start with the mappings and parameter settings. Select the render top and choose the resolution you will be working with. In my case, I prefer working vertically, so I'll use 1080x 1920. And now copy the following parameters into each of the operators. Select pseudo liquids and copy the following values into each of the tabs. Select Edge and copy these parameters. Select Mirror and copy these parameters. Go to the first composite and choose the Blend Mode Negate. Now, copy each of the following values into our mini network where we are creating the texture to be used in our 3D object. Select Blur and copy these parameters. Go to the first level and change the pixel format to 32-bit mono. Do the same with the second level, but also modify some parameters. Copy the following values. Next, this is super important, so don't miss a single detail. Select the PBR material and copy these parameters.
Go to the Maps option, copy these parameters, and enable the following settings. Now let's continue setting parameters in the SOP section. Select the grid and copy these parameters. Select Attribute, create and enable both options. Now the magic of working with Touch Designer, assign the PBR material to the SOP material. We have our initial results. Now we need to tweak just a few things. Select the light operator and copy these parameters. Go to the last displace and use these parameters. Select the constant and choose this color. In the composite, we'll stay with multiply. Perfect. We've finished parameterizing everything up to this point. Remember, you can manipulate the settings as you like, but I'd like you to follow the instructions exactly to achieve the expected result. After that, you can start experimenting. We have two more details to cover, which I'll explain next. Part three, camera and lights. Select the camera and click on the plus icon to manipulate its position with the mouse. I prefer to zoom out of the scene completely to get a panoramic view, which helps me decide how to position the camera better. To manipulate the camera with the mouse, use the left and right buttons and the scroll wheel, similar to any 3D program. It's common to lose track of the scene. Use the H key to return to the original or home position. Position the camera as you like. I prefer a bit of rotation to add depth to the textures. Select your light source. I like to rotate it and move it away from the plane until I achieve a more contrasting effect. Additionally, I want to avoid having too much light to the point where the silhouette is visible. I prefer to achieve a diffused light effect, which I accomplish by moving the light further from the object. Part four, play and explore. The best part of the tutorial is undoubtedly the following. Select the custom component pseudo liquid, right click on parameters. For now, I prefer to have this pop-up window to show you what we can do next. Here you can manipulate all the parameters to your liking and create different emotions in the texture. In my opinion, the parameters that generate the most significant changes are in the noise window. You will notice more significant changes, especially when using the exponent, amplitude, and offset of the noise. And if you go to the mirror option, you can also create more kaleidoscopic forms. Remember, there are some parameters in the network that we can also manipulate, such as the colors in the final constant and the blend modes in the last composite of the network. Great, if you want something more advanced, I invite you to explore the second, more advanced version of Pseudo Liquids. It comes with seven default presets and allows you to create, rename, and save your own presets. You can find this more advanced version on my Patreon. Connect the output of Pseudo Liquids version two to the two initial inputs of your network. Now you have various types of presets that generate different results. Some work better than others, depending on your preferences. Personally, I'm still obsessed with glassy, liquid, and transparent textures. I'm going to choose the pink thermal preset and increase the bump significantly to get a texture with more details. I can also start playing with the camera and exploring different angles. Great, I hope you have achieved the results from the tutorial. See you in the next one.